All right, hello everyone. My name is Lindsay. Hi from Washington, DC. I work on the education team here at National Geographic, and we are so excited to be supporting Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants on this incredible all-day event celebrating women in science and exploration. Um, there are 30-minute hangouts all day, so check out exploringbytheseat.com to learn more. Um, I want to welcome our classrooms joining us on screen today, um, Mrs. Bryce's class and Mrs. Hanko's class, as well as our fabulous explorer, Genevieve von Petzinger. Um, Genevieve is a, did I say it correctly? You did, you said it perfectly. Right. Um, Genevieve is a paleoanthropologist who noticed that they were, there were geometric signs in caves all across Europe and put together a database of these incredible markings. Um, and she can tell us much more about that. Um, I also want to note for anyone who's watching on live stream that you can tweet at let's explore hashtag no apostrophe. Um, and I'll be monitoring that. So if you have questions for Genevieve, you can submit them there as well. Um, all right, let's get started. Genevieve, take it away. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's really fun to, I have a really fun job, I like to think. Um, and so it's really fun that other people like to hear about it too. Um, so I guess at the start of it, what I really am is I'm an archaeologist, right? Um, so what that means is I study ancient people and their cultures. Um, but what I study in particular is really, really, really ancient culture. So I study people who lived during the Ice Age or the Stone Age is what it's called. So these are our earliest ancestors. Um, you probably know them as cavemen or cave women, right? Uh, but what I find so fascinating about them is that they're so often uh, in cartoons and stuff like that. We sort of see them as being kind of like these these dumb people who are wearing sort of furs and running around bonking each other on the head. Um, but they were really like us. Like they, they looked like us. They had the same brains we did. But what's so mysterious about that long ago is we don't know yet if they could think the way we could. Um, so we don't know if they were able to, like we don't know if they were able to do some of the things that we could do, um, like mathematics or you know, could they write notes to each other or, you know, what sort of stuff could they actually do? And so this is what makes it really fun is that I get to study this time when these ancient people, so our ancestors, for the very first time started inventing all these really cool things that we still use today. Um, and so that to me, that's what sort of is the mystery of it all. Um, specifically, I work in caves around Europe. Um, really old caves, and it's really fun. I think caves are really fun. Either you think caves are funny, you probably think they're all kind of squishy and gross, um, which they can be, but they're also really fun. Um, and I think one of the things that's the most fun is that I get to study some of the oldest art in the world. And so when I go into the caves, I get to actually go into these caves and I get to go stand in front of walls where there's art that is literally like 30,000, 40,000 years old. So it's so old. It's, it's literally the very first time people started making pictures. And I get to sort of stand there and look at it and be like, why were you doing that? What were you doing here? Um, and it's not just adults either. That's actually where I wanted to start is this is actually a kid's hand. Um, are you guys able to see it, everybody? So this is actually a children's hand. Um, so say maybe about 10 years old or so. And this this kid actually walked, oh geez, this must be, this is at least a quarter mile into the cave. Um, so just 10 year old, super brave, hey? Walked about, walked about that far into the cave. And then what they did was they actually put, they put uh, paint in their mouth, special kind of paint, and then they spat it out around their hand to leave their handprint behind. And so when you see that, it's interesting to know, too, it's not just grown-ups doing painting. There was kids doing painting, too. Everybody did it. Um, so how did they make the paint? Because that's sort of a good place to start. The art we find is either made with paint, and so that's things like what we call red ochre. And so ochre is basically like if you look at those these rocks, you can take these rocks and you can actually um, grind bits of them off, and you can mix them with water and with other things and turn them into paint. And so that's what they were doing, is they were mixing these up, and then they were putting them on the walls. Um, or sometimes they also used tools and 
and basically carve the walls as well. So those are the two big ways that they did it. And we call this Ice Age cave art. And so this was made by people living in Europe during the Ice Age. And that was between 10,000 and 40,000 years ago. So here you can see there's a whole bunch of hands in this picture, as well as a, a funny looking bison up top in yellow. But there's hands from adults and kids and men and women. So everybody was getting into the act and making the art. Um, so the thing that's so interesting about the art is they had certain things they really liked to draw. And so one thing they really liked to draw was animals. And so you can see there's a deer on one side, and then on the other side you can see there's a horse. And they both look kind of simple in some ways, right? Because they're just sort of an outline. But if you look at the horse, can you see how they actually put like fur on the belly a little bit? So right here, you can see they actually gave it a bit of a furry belly and they drew in the mane and things. So there's a little more to it than you might otherwise realize. Um, and along with doing animals, they also sometimes drew people, but not very often. And they were often just these sort of funny outlines of people when they did do people. But then Genevieve, we get, yeah, we're still seeing the photo of the hand. Is that supposed to still be? Oh, has it, no, has it not moved? Oh, no. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, so it only went to the hand. Oh, man. Okay. Um, let's go to this one. Can we see? Uh -huh. Can you see it now? Yes, it's changing. Maybe if you put it in um, presentation mode. Yeah, because I had it in presentation mode. Oh. Yeah. I'm seeing like the slideshow view. Okay, how's that? Can you see the powders I'm now? Seeing, we're seeing making paint. Okay, good. Okay, so here, let me, we'll, we'll, we'll retract that. Sorry, you guys. I thought you could see it too. Um, yeah, Lindsay, let me know. I'll tell you when the slide changes and let me know. So these okay. are, yeah, these are the materials that you use. So these are the these are the different types of pigments so these are the powders that you basically you grind them up and you mix them with water and you make the paint with them so this is how they made paint was actually they would go find these rocks these special rocks and then they would grind them up and make the paint with them okay i just changed slides can we see where it says ice age cave art now nope we're still on making paint yeah okay so it seems to be but having... now it's correct now it's back okay so there we go oh we're getting new. <laughs> okay, let's try that. The current slide. Can we see Ice Age Cave right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I was showing. Was this is where we can see that there's there's all these hands that are across this, and those hands are actually there's adults, there's kids, there's men, there's women, um, and then this is sort of a funny picture of a bison who's jumping along the wall right here, and this is sort of the art was between ten thousand and forty thousand years ago. Um, Seems like it doesn't like when I do it that way, so I'm just going to go like that and make it big for you. How's that? Now we can see animals? Okay. Yep. Good. Wonderful. Okay, so here's what I was talking about with the horse. You can see there are these sort of simple outlines of horses and deer and things like that. But if you look, you can see where the mane's drawn in with up top there on the horse. And they gave it a furry belly, too, which is kind of interesting. So they're actually putting a lot of detail into these animals. Here is the humans. So we only find a few of these. There's not very many. And when we do see them, they often just kind of are these funny outlines of people. They didn't really draw the people in very well, which we don't know why, because they were able to do good animals. So maybe there was some other reason why they didn't like to draw people. So some cultures are like that. But we don't, we don't know. It's one of the many mysteries. Um, but then what I study are these right here which are the large number of geometric signs. And so we find a lot of these in the caves. Um, and as you can see, sometimes they're rectangles, they can be circles, they can be um, zigzag lines. So all sorts of different geometric shapes, basically. Um, sometimes they're painted, sometimes they're engraved like this. So these ones were actually carved in. You can see they look like double circles here. So sometimes they're carved, sometimes they're painted. Um, and what makes it so interesting is that at many caves, the geometric signs outnumber the animals by a long shot. So if you look, you can see there's one little horse down in the corner right there. But all the rest of this are these funny geometric shapes. We've got like a red triangle. We've got a red rectangle. We've got sort of another circular shape. So you can see there's just all these different shapes everywhere. But what people didn't seem to like, what they hadn't really done, and that's what was sort of funny, was that people hadn't looked at these as much. So when I started doing my research, um, 
I was really interested in the geometric signs and what might be going on with them. And so if you look on the side of this pretty, this lovely bowl picture, you can see there's four dots in a row right there. Or right above it, it's back, there's also a sort of almost looks like a line with another line crossing it. But nobody ever talked about those. They always talked about the animals. Um, and that was where, that's what really got me interested and made me want to do my research. And so what I did was I wanted to know if the same signs, did they appear in different places and at different times? Because if we were finding the same signs in different places, then that might mean that there was actually some sort of system to what they were doing. Um, and if there's a system, then we might be able to figure out a little bit more about what they might have been trying to talk to each other about. So for my project, what I did was I actually went and I crawled around 52 different caves um, and rock art sites. Um, in four different countries in Europe. Um, it was a very busy two years. And this is just sort of to give you a picture, sort of, so I was in France, I was in, I was over in northern Spain, I was in Portugal, and I even went over to Sicily, down off the south part of Italy there. Um, and what we did was we used some really cool new technology, which hadn't been used very much before. So sometimes when you're in the caves, this is what the regular old wall looks like on the one side. But if you use this really cool program called D-Stretch, it's a computer program, can you see how now there's the deer, there's his head, there's his antlers, there's his back. So there was an entire deer hiding on the wall that if you look at it with your eyes, it just looks like a red smudge. So we were finding all sorts of really exciting new art. Um, and specifically, we were looking at these, these mysterious figures. And so with all of the different caves we traveled to and then also building a database using other people's work as well, we came, I've come up with 32 main signs that people were using during the Ice Age. Um, and so in a way, you can almost think of it, it's not like an alphabet, because alphabets are a little bit different, but it is sort of a set of these shapes that they were using over and over again in different caves, which suggests that they probably were meaningful to the people using, they probably did have a meaning. So the big question is kind of, you know, what could they have meant, right? Um, and seeing those, this is sort of what I wanted to end with, and then we can kind of explore some of the stuff from there, is um, I'm sure many of you know what emojis are from your cell phones and things like that. So you can see this is sort of the question is, you know, is this where emojis come from? Is this kind of the beginning of it all, right? Um, and as you can see, we've got sort of a set of different signs that are all almost in a row here, and it looks a little bit more like writing, doesn't it? So we're not talking about writing yet, because writing means that you can basically, anything that you can say in a, in, with your words, you could also write down, and I don't think they had that much, that, they didn't have enough, they didn't have enough different signs they were using to be able to write everything down yet. But it is really interesting to think that maybe they were actually starting to communicate, and maybe this was the very first, maybe this was the very first time that they were actually doing it. So. That's just a few little pictures. Um, I thought it would be fun though, I wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to ask me some questions too, but that's basically the really short version of what I do. I crawl around caves, I look at funny signs, and then I try and figure out what they mean. So yeah, I'm happy to answer questions though. Awesome, incredible. Um, all right, we're gonna start with um, Mrs. Hanko's class, and then we've got plenty of time, so go ahead and, and ask us your questions. Um, your mic is live now. Are caves dark? Our caves are. That's a good question. Yes, they're very dark, and sometimes they even have bats living in them. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, for us, it's not so scary, right? Uh, because we have big lights with us when we go in there, and so, and we know a cave is like made of stone, and we know what it is. But it must have been very brave, hey, especially for those kids to go in there so long ago, huh? Yeah. Have you seen any weird animals in caves? Have I seen any weird animals? Well, I've seen some kind of weird spiders and a few other things like that. Um, the funny thing is, is that most things like to live near the entrance of caves. And once you actually get deep enough into a cave, um, there's often not that many things living there anymore. It's, it's pretty quiet. Um, it, it's actually a really special place. I like it in there. Um, I find it relaxing. But again, you know, I don't, I don't think caves are scary that way. Um, and I don't mind being squished into little places too. So that also helps. Um, but yeah, no, there's some, sometimes near the entrance too, 
and during the Ice Age as well, sometimes people lived in caves, sometimes cave bears lived in caves. So people had to be a little bit careful, I bet you, when they went into the caves to make sure that there was no cave bears living there first before they went in, because I don't think they were very good at sharing their caves. Have you found any crystals? Have I found any crystals? Ooh, well, some of the caves I've been in have had really beautiful, like some of the caves are just kind of muddy and sort of dirty, if you know what I mean, like there's just a lot of mud and stuff, but sometimes I've been in caves which are absolutely beautiful. Um, because what happens is that sometimes you get, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of caves where they get these beautiful, almost like icicles that come down off the ceiling in caves. And sometimes they can be glittery and they can be sort of a beautiful white color or yellow or other colors too. And so, yeah, sometimes I've been in caves where it almost looks like there's beautiful crystals and snow everywhere. So. I always wonder what people must have thought when they went in there like 30, 40,000 years ago, um, whether they liked the caves the same way we do now. Awesome. I see you guys have a few more questions, but we're going to pop over to Mrs. Bryce's class and get some questions from them and then come back, okay? Mrs. Bryce, your microphone is live. Hello. First, David, your first, um, <laughs> how long have you been doing your research? Um, so I started crawling around caves probably about, I guess now it'd be probably about eight years ago. So I've been crawling around caves for about eight years now. Um, so, but it's actually, though, that's a really good question you're asking because it's one of those things that you guys are all sitting in classrooms learning about, you know, what other people are doing, right? So people like me or other people who've discovered things and done stuff. And it probably feels in a lot of ways like, you know, everything's been done. But when I started doing this, nobody had done it before. So it's just almost a matter sometimes just kind of keeping your eyes and ears open. And if something really intrigues you, um, there's still so much left to be done. Um, but yeah, so I'm one of the only people in the world who actually studies the geometric signs specifically from the Ice Age. So maybe maybe when you grow up, you can come join me. <laughs> what, what school did you go to? Um, I actually went to school here. I'm actually, this is my hometown in Victoria. So I actually went to school here in the city of Victoria in Canada. Um, yeah, it's funny. I've knew, I knew, known since I was a kid, I actually wanted to be an archaeologist. Um, and, but then I didn't know kind of what kind of archaeologist. And that actually took till I was growing up and going to university. And I mean, I liked Romans and Egyptians. I mean, that stuff's really cool too. But, um, I realized it wasn't old enough for me, which sounds funny. Uh, and that's when I decided that I actually was really interested in, you know, basically the starts of things, right? Like what was the origins of, you know, by the time you get to the Romans or the Egyptians, they're building beautiful pyramids and, you know, writing and doing all sorts of cool stuff. But where did it come from? Um, and that's, I think, what gets me excited about this was, um, yeah, I knew I wanted to do archaeology for a long time, but just finding the right kind of archaeology. Oh, uh, is there like animals in the cave like that? Oh, what the? Um, actually, I was thinking about speaking of animals. Um, it depends. Actually, funnily enough, in Italy and in some Spanish sites, they actually have a really long tradition there of um, sheltering their sheep and their goats in the front of the caves. So sometimes um, it's actually kind of funny. You have to actually crawl through animal poop <laughs> to get further into the caves. <laughs> And you're like, excuse me, sheep, we got to keep going. Um, so, so sometimes they actually do. There's those, those kind of animals. Um, and then obviously there are wild animals. Um, when we were in Sicily, I was a little more careful about snakes because they do have vipers down there. So sometimes they're sort of creepy animals. But like I said, most of them live right near the entrance. So once you've gotten a little farther into the caves, there's actually not that many bugs or critters left. Um, unless, again, you were to run across a cave bear. But... They don't live in, they don't, they've gone extinct, unfortunately, since the Ice Age. So we don't have to worry about running into them anymore. Cool. Let's bounce back to Mrs. Hanko's class for a few questions. You guys, your mic is live. Hello. Um, have you seen any snakes? Have I seen any snakes? I, I did actually it was really scary I had my my little son my little son with me um, and we were walking along a path near a, near a cave 
and he almost stepped on a snake. I actually had to grab him and pull him back because he almost stepped on the snake. So that one was a little scary. Um, but mostly, no. I try and be loud. Like snakes don't, snakes don't really want to bug you, right? They mostly want to be left alone. It's more if you surprise them. So I usually make a point of stomping my feet a lot when I get up to the caves, um, and that gives the snakes lots of time to sort of run away if they want to. Um, have you ever seen any of the um, cave pictures? I have, yeah. Um, I've gotten to see lots and lots of cave pictures. They're so cool. Um, sometimes they're animals, sometimes they're pictures of people, and uh, sometimes they're actually pictures of the different geometric shapes that I'm so interested in. So, yeah, I've gotten to see pictures in over 50 different caves. So it's, it's been really fun. It's, it's, I like hanging around in caves. Um, other people in there? Other people? Well, um, <laughs> no, no, no live people. Um, I actually have been in caves before where people were buried there a really long time ago. Um, so I have actually seen some skeletons in caves. Um, but no, um, the only other live people are usually ones that are with me. <laughs> They're part of my team. <laughs> so, no, we haven't stumbled across any people by surprise in there. How many caves? Have you How many caves have I been in? Um, I've probably been in somewhere around 70 caves altogether. Um, for this most recent project. Yeah, so I spend a lot of time in caves is basically <laughs> what happens. Um, I figured out for this last project, yeah, we were spending, I think the longest time I've ever spent in a single cave was probably about 10 hours. That was a really long day. Um, so we were in the cave for almost 10 hours that day. Um, but it was a really, it was a beautiful, it was a really big cave though. So we actually went several miles into the cave. And so that's why it took quite a long, long time to walk in and quite a long time to walk out. But luckily, because we had lots of lights, we had food with us and stuff, so it was okay. Uh, yes. Um, any bats? Ooh, I have, actually. Um, I've seen a few. We try not to bother them if we see them, right? Because the caves are their home, so we're just visiting when we're there. Um, but no, the last, uh, last bat I actually saw was with... Um, my son actually came with me to a couple caves just in November. We were actually in Spain and actually brought my son with me to a couple caves for the first time. And yeah, we actually got quite close to a bat. And then I was like, whoop, okay, shh, quiet, back away. So that way we can, we don't want to bother the bat because the bat was sleeping. That's usually what they're doing in the caves is they're hanging upside down, um, well, hanging upside down. And then they're, they've got their little wings. They actually curl their wings over their face. Um, and so here we are with our light, right? So I'm like, whoop, let's not point the light at the bat. Um, so yeah, we left the bat to have a sleep and we went into a different part of the cave instead. But yeah, we have been in caves sometimes with a lot of bats, but mm, generally the bats don't really want to bother us and we try hard not to bother them. Um, have you ever seen like really big snakes? <laughs> no, nothing too scary and big, no. Um, probably like meh, meh. Not too big. The viper, like I said, was actually pretty thick, though, too. It was a pretty big snake that way. But, yeah, no, generally not too bad. I see some big spiders, though, in there. Sometimes where you're like, ah, that's a pretty big spider. <laughs> okay, guys. We're getting close to the end of our time here. So how about one last question for Genevieve? Have you ever seen any cave bears? Any cave bears? Well, I've never seen any live cave bears. I've seen cave bear skeletons, though, uh, because cave bears actually went extinct at, at the end of the Ice Age. So that means they, they, they no longer, once the ice went away in Europe, it wasn't a good place for them to live anymore, and they, and they unfortunately died out. But when you went to caves, you can often find places where they used to sleep for their hibernation. And sometimes you do find big cave bear skulls and cool stuff like that. 
Cool. Um, before I wrap it up, I actually want to ask you a question, Genevieve. Um, okay, okay. I was wondering if there is any like indication that those 32 signs exist anywhere beyond the four countries that you studied. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I, mean, I, I, I think the big thing, those are the countries where I've worked. Um, but, but the 32 signs are found across um, across Europe. and not just on cave walls either, sometimes they're actually found on portable artifacts as well. So on pieces that people decorated but that they could then put in their pockets and take with them. So um, yeah, there's actually and they, the same ones repeat at all these different sites, which is what makes them so interesting and like there's some sort of some sort of meaning and purpose going on there even if we don't know quite what it is. Um, but it certainly does seem like it's kind of when we're looking at the signs we really are looking at one of the first systems of graphic communication in the world. So this is one of the first attempts by those distant ancestors to actually potentially leave messages for each other and be able to communicate. Um, and having moved beyond just sort of physical, you know, um, verbal speech and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, quite, it's quite, and honestly, I think they actually even, you find a lot of them even beyond Europe as well. But that's, 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 that's to come. There's there's more caves to be crawled and more places to look. Um, but yeah, I think we find them even broader than that as well. That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, um, and yeah. thank you very much from all of us at Nat Geo for being such a great part of this event. Um, thank you to the classes. Mrs. Hanko's class sent me a note. Their bell rang, so they had to yeah. leave. Um, but thank you to all of the classrooms. Mrs. Bryce's class, thank you for joining yeah. us. Um, or sorry, I, I got those reversed. Mrs. Bryce's class had to leave. Um, <laughs> it's the end of the day, everyone. I know, I know. Um, so um, I want to thank also uh, Joe Grabowski and his organization, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, for organizing this great event. Um, and if you liked this event, um, know that you can find more at exploringbytheseat.com. And you can find more events like this with our Nat Geo Explorers at natgeoed.org slash explore classroom. Um, I'm going to turn your mic back on so everyone can say a big bye to Genevieve, and then we'll all get going. All right, bye. Oh. <laughs> bye. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>